Welcome marketing chefs. I've got something truly special cooking in the Omni Channel oven today. Lego Star Wars 2019 Advent Calendar. Up next in the Marketing Kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, the marketing kitchen. Hi, I'm Ron Vining, your host of Marketing Kitchen TV. I'm so excited to be here. This is the first episode that I've recorded in over two months. Where have I been? Actually, I traveled to the US. While I was there, I amassed a huge Lego haul of sets from uh, summer of 2018 all the way to the 20th anniversary spring releases. But a lot of sets to build and share with you. I also have been busy scrambling to pick up some new clients. Anyway, I'm back in Singapore, so I've been busy working, doing different things. I've been developing an all new digital marketing course that starts next week. That means the marketing Q&A episodes will be starting again. And I'll be posting a bunch of Lego videos, videos about music, films, all kinds of different content. Things that we had been doing before, but I want to ramp it up to the next level so that we get to a thousand subscribers by the end of September. And I really want to do a huge jump and get to 10,000 subscribers by the start of 2020. And I can't do that without you. So I really need your help on that. So please like this video and subscribe to this channel so that we can accomplish that goal. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do, one of my commitments to you, is to start posting more content more frequently. And the best way for me to do that is for me to do sort of one take live videos with very limited editing. So that's going to be my approach going forward. Let's get to why you're here today. And I'm quite excited to share this with you. This is, are you ready? Da -da 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 -da. This is the 2019 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I purchased this today. So Lego, no takedown notices because right here, I bought it at the Lego store here in Singapore. It's official. It was on a store shelf. I also have with me my receipt. Just to confirm, here is the store price tag that I took off the box. And here is my receipt. And here's the credit card receipt. If you got a problem, don't contact YouTube, contact me and I'll send you that documentation. All right, I'm gonna share with you this set, we're gonna do an unboxing. I'm so excited for this. Let's take a look at my highlights from the set, as well as let's look at this box in a little bit more detail. I think this one's really cool because when you open this flap up, actually it goes this way. I think this one is a bit cooler than some of the others because it actually, this is Octu with snow on it. And I, I don't know, I just, I, I, I like this image better. The other one was a bit more kiddish and it had a lot of, it was a bit more noisy. It was actually more sort of like this, if you will, with different things going on on the scenes, uh, a bit more like the cover here, more, a bit more cartoon-like. So I think from a display standpoint, this is a much, much better picture on the box. Also too, on this particular box, we have uh, Luke Skywalker. He is the exclusive, at least for now, printed figure for this set, which is quite cool. I am disappointed that there isn't a printed Christmas figure, and I'll share with you in a minute highlights of years of Advent calendars past. So the Ghosts of Christmas past, I'll be sharing with you highlights of Advent calendars past of exclusive Christmas prints. So unfortunately, we don't have that in this particular set, but we do have this exclusive Luke. And we have an exclusive BB-8, but just about anybody could customize this themselves. And this exclusive Gonk Droid, which again, I believe uh, 
just going to BrickLink, you would be able to get the parts or even uh, you might have a lot of the spares yourself to be able to build that. Uh, so anyway, I find that disappointing. I really enjoyed the exclusive Christmas uh, printed fi minifigures, but can't have everything. All right, let's take a look at first my highlights from the set, and then I'm going to show you the uh, Ghosts of Advent Calendars past. All right, let's unbox this set. Are you excited for it? I certainly am. All right, I'm gonna cut this box open carefully. Now you're probably saying, why is he cutting the box that way? Well, because I actually, I store these boxes. One of the things that Lego has done over the past two advent calendars now is the egg crate inside is now a bit more eco-friendly. And while I understand, and I think it's good that Lego's done that for the environment, I really enjoyed the plastic egg crate because it was a great way to sort out my different bricks or parts for different builds. So the, um, the, these cardboard ones or these uh, are a bit, they're just a bit more flimsy and uh, I don't think that they will hold up as long, especially in the humidity of Singapore. All right, so here's all of the sets in the advent calendar and I'm going to go over to my workspace in the kitchen and open them up for you. Or should we do it for the once on the storytelling stovetop? Hmm. No, we're gonna go over to the kitchen side to do some speed builds here to show you some of the highlights. I don't know that I'm gonna build them all. Let's see. Let's see how excited I am first about whether we build them all or whether we just give you a preview or some of the highlights. All right, let's check it out.
I hope you enjoyed that speed build. Now let's go over my highlights from the 2019 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. All right, I have them on display right here. In fact, let's just turn the light on. Dun, da, dun. Dun, da, dun, dun. All right, anyway, here are my highlights of the Advent Calendar. And we'll, I think I'll, I'll try to remember the order with, with, with which they came about. Uh, Obviously, this is the first order Star Destroyer. I believe this is the one that Kylo Ren was, was in in Episode uh, 7, so Force Awakens. And I think it's a nice build. It's not the best build that we've had uh, for Star Destroyer, but this is the first, um, first order Star Destroyer that we've had in an advent calendar. There was a poly bag and then there was the full size set. This is the first uh, for an advent calendar, so mini build size, so not too bad. I think keeping in that same theme, we'll just go to Kylo Ren's shuttle. Uh, I, mm, mm, okay, not the best, but all right, anyway, I like shuttles. So, oh, by the way, when you were watching the speed build, I gave a thumbs up to some of them, gave a thumbs down to some others, I think, and then others I just kind of passed on. Uh, there's, when it comes to Star Wars, there's certain sets, I buy everything, but there's certain ones that I will open and build, and they're based on what I love most. So things that I love most are Star Destroyers, TIE Fighters, Imperial shuttles or you know throwing that over to the the first order as well, too uh, So primarily the Empire, but outside of the Empire There's you know some other themes that I also appreciate so when it came to building the advent calendar I, I Overlooked some things that I know that I'm not going to put in my display cases uh, And also I'll just keep them in the bag and maybe in the future I will be excited about that theme or the, those particular range, and I'll build them. Or if not, 20 years from now, I'll sell them off. Oh, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, one thing I do love is the Death Star. So I believe, I mean, this could either be, I've seen online uh, people say that they thought that this was from the Death Star, others thought it was from the First Order. I'm not exactly sure which, but this is actually going to go into my Lego Death Star, so we'll call it the Death Star. But Based on the fact that Poe's X-Wing came with this, I'm guessing that maybe this was the counterbalance to Poe's X-Wing. So potentially this is first order, so this would have been Starkiller base. And Lego, will you please give us a Starkiller base playset? And what I would love, even though Snoke was killed off in The Last Jedi, I'd love a big fig of Snoke. So that hologram, I'd love to have that hologram seen from the Force Awakens with a big fig of Snoke. So th I would love to see a Starkiller base. All right, uh, keeping on um, that, uh, well, uh, actually keeping on that theme, this uh, is a first order, um, you know, rifle of some sort, uh, sort of on the ground assault. It was the weapon that they mounted and fired. So anyway, I thought this was cool. I'll put it in my display case with some first order troopers that are there. I love this tiny little mouse droid. I have Darth Vader's castle, but I haven't built it yet, so I'm not sure if this is the same build or not, but anyway, this will go in with my minifigures, so I wanted to build that. Here is the Minoc. The Minoc that came with the UCS Millennium Falcon, the $800 UCS Millennium Falcon. I believe this is the same model. If not, it's pretty darn close. Um, I, even though you could bricklink this, I mean, I, I understand why Lego does this, but I don't know, I spent $800 on a UCS Millennium Falcon. Do you, do you need to give, put these in like cheap sets? Mm. Anyhow, I will actually put this on my Falcon because the one that came with my Falcon, I have boxed up in a display case so that it won't get dusty. So, uh, but anyway, so I appreciate it. I'll put it either on the Falcon or with my creatures. This is pretty cool. This is from, it helps if I have it the right side up. This is from Hoth Eco Base, and I will be doing a video in the future 
on the uh, Battle of Hoth game that I have. And I'll be showing all how you can expand the game with a number of, uh, of sets that came, or a number of builds rather, that came in the advent calendar. So I'll include this in here, but this is really cool. I like this a lot. Speaking of, the Empire Strikes Back. Here is a twin pod cloud car. I think this is a cute little build. It's quite nice. Uh, last year we received Cloud City with a smaller build of this uh, hovering around it. So this is nice. I, I enjoy that. And let's get two. I didn't build this in the speed build, but then afterwards I regretted it because I said, wow, you know, this, this is actually, uh, I believe it's unpiloted. I believe it's part of the Trade Federation Army, so it would be robotic. So anyway, I thought I'd build this and put this in with my minifigures because even though it'd be on micro scale to a minifigure, it is a, a droid technically. So I would uh, add that to that collection there. And so let's see, speaking of droids, why don't I show you the exclusive gonk droid that came with the advent calendar this year. And uh, that's quite cute. I like it. I think they did a nice job making it a present. Uh, this bow, I would have actually really rathered, um, let's see, where's the, the part here? I think it would have been very cool if rather than do this, if they had um, this particular brick in red and had done something like had putting two of those on there, I don't know. This is just a little bit messy for me, but otherwise that's quite fun. So I, I like that. And then that gets us to the final two here and I put them together as a companion. And this of course would be Chewbacca with the exclusive Christmas pork. And so, and of course I, I did the build of Octu. So we have the pork comes with um, the court Porg comes with this little gift. Uh, we have the exclusive red printed Porg, which uh, the, I mean, you get the printed face and you get the Santa hat. Both those are a little bit more, I mean, they're not very hard to get, but, but uh, you could get those and you could build this yourself. But anyway, I, I really wish that Lego would have made an exclusive printed figure this year. Like, you know, we received a white Chewbacca a couple of years ago and I enjoyed that. But all right, anyhow, we have Chewie, we have him cooking up a pork, and uh, so that's gonna be Chewie's Thanksgiving or Christmas feast. And here's poor Santa pork. Um, you know, want some of that? Okay, all right, anyway. So that's cute. I'll, uh, I will do something with these in a minute. Before I get to the ghosts of, Advent, of, uh, the ghosts of Star Wars Advent Calendar's path, I just want to talk to you about why I didn't build some of the things that I did. This is Poe's X-Wing. Uh, it's a decent mini build, but I have Poe's X-Wing from a poly bag, which is a, a larger build and it's a bit nicer. So I'll just keep this in this bag for the future. This was a um, Trade Federation MTT, or I believe, anyway, I think that's the right initials. Uh, there's been a couple of these in the LEGO Advent Calendar before. This is actually a nicer build than those others, but again, something I'm not going to display. Uh, and I know that runs counter to the fact that I said that I would display this, but I believe this is piloted or it's automated, whereas this is a droid. So, yeah, future. This was the quad jumper, the quad jumper from The Force Awakens, the ship that Rey and Finn and BB-8 were going to escape Jakku on uh, before they were uh, to, uh, uh, before they ended up, it was destroyed, then they ended up on the Falcon, that piece of junk, right? So, but this, this mini build is nice. However, I subscribe to the Lego Star Wars magazine and they have a much nicer build of the quad jumper. Again, sort of the same reason why I said about Poe's X-Wing. So I, I don't need to build this one. I'll save that for the future. 
This is a resistance uh, transport that Princess Leia was in when she went to, uh, to uh, see Han at, uh, at Maz, uh, the Battle of uh, Takudana, when they went to uh, Maz, uh, the ruins of Maz Kanata's uh, castle there. So, yeah, don't need it. And finally, this is the escape pod from the, um, the Rebel Blockade Runner, or the Tanta 5. I think, uh, Tanta 4, I think that um, I will actually, I didn't build it for this, but I, I actually might build it because it's actually on a pretty decent scale with the sort of UCS, uh, um, though it wasn't UCS, was that a master builder? What was the TANF for that we got this year? All right, anyway, um, yeah. So anyway, I may or may not build this, but this is the shuttle that R2-D2 and C-3PO escaped on. I think it is anyway. It, it should be. Oh, why in the speed build did I have so many trouble? And it's because I'm the very first person to crack open an advent calendar and film a video for YouTube on it. So there are actually no instructions available online for the advent calendar just yet. And as you notice, I keep all of my advent calendar boxes. I have not pushed the tabs in. I know that's, I, I'm not fully enjoying it, but uh, I'm a collector. I didn't want to ruin the box. I actually, I only save the boxes of UCS sets or master builder sets or the 20th anniversary ones and the advent calendars. So while I will, I've broken the box down to be able to flatten it, I haven't punched these. So I didn't have the instructions. So I was just looking at reference photo and that's why it took me a couple of, of way, uh, a couple of tries to get the build done. All right, let's talk about why I didn't build some of the, the minifigures that were included. All right, well, first of all, here's a battle droid from the prequels. I'm, I do like the battle droids, but I've got to tell you, I have so many in this particular color, as do many other people. And while it is fun to army build, I actually only uh, display in my little box cases one of each variant of the figure. So seeing as this is not a variant in any way that I'm aware of, I am not going to build it. This is a gorgeous and fantastic update of the uh, Rebel Trooper that can be found uh, on the Rebel Blockade Runner in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And we received him twice this year. One in the Junior set, the, uh, the Four Plus set with the TIE Fighter, and then also in the semi-UCS Master Builder uh, Tanta IV Rebel Blockade Runner. So again, he's not a variant. Uh, I have already two of them, so I don't need to open this up. This is again, a very gorgeous and new figure, new to last year. He, became, he came in Betrayal of Cloud City. And this is the twin, co twin pod <laughs> cloud car pilot. Try saying that a few times very quickly. I need to double check, but I don't believe his face is in, or, or print. I, do, I know the print probably is not different, but I'm not sure if the face is different. If the face is the same as what was in Cloud City, then while I appreciate the army building aspect of this, I only need two. And that, uh, right, for the twin pod. And then I love Death Star Gunners, but here again is, um, he came, in a battle pack, uh, it, was so, it was so long in coming for us to finally receive this minifigure. So I love the Death Star gunner, uh, the ones that were firing the gun turrets in the Death Star, uh, which of course, this also could be because he's included in this figure and this gun, he would be manning that in the Death Star. So again, I'm not sure whether that is from Starkiller Base or whether it is from the Death Star but it could be because this is the Death Star Gunner. Anyway, while I love these, he has come in so many sets and he'll be coming in a new set uh, the, in January, which it will be the Death Star Gunner and Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, together. But oh, the Obi-Wan figure is new, but I believe this is gonna be the same one. So anyway, I'll keep that bagged up. For me anyway, as a Lego Star Wars fan, I, I 
I don't, um, I don't like to part with anything in my collection. So, but also if I don't need to open something up, then I keep it in the poly bag, which also goes to this. This is a gorgeous uh, first order stormtrooper. However, I have two of these now, but for those of you that, that um, aren't aware, they actually, the, the first order trooper between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi was updated, not only in the film, but Lego also did the update as well too. So actually it's just that the point on the nose here is, uh, is thinner or a bit more aerodynamic, more pointy uh, on the updated version. And if you lived in Europe and you bought the first order Star Destroyer, then you received that updated print. If you were in America, you received the older version from The Force Awakens. So from, from two years prior sets. So, but anyway, I already have a couple of this version, so he can remain in the poly bag. Also, I found that, again, there's no, there's no cure that, I, that I'm aware of or no real way to prevent, obviously, other than keeping out of light, but still doesn't matter. Your white and grays, well, actually, all, all figures are going to change color in some way or another over time. I have found that this type of, uh, of poly bag tends to keep things whiter longer. So I will keep them in this so that when, let's say, the version that I have that's in one of my display cases, even though they're kept in the dark, even though they're covered in, and uh, they're covered in a plastic acrylic case, they can't get, they don't get dusty, they still will change color. So anyway, I'll save him for the future just in case that happens. All right, so this is the Lego Star Wars 2019 Advent Calendar. And, and I like it. I think it's an improvement over, Lego has been trying to make the mini builds better than they were the, from the first Advent Calendar that came out in 2011. And uh, I've been fortunate to buy every one between 2011 and now 2019. So that's eight Advent Calendars. I enjoyed the exclusive prints in Advent Calendars past but I do appreciate also, now that we don't get exclusive prints, a, a higher quality build. Uh, like, you know, even though this is a mini build, there's, you know, actual full bricks in here as opposed to using, um, you know, studs. All right, uh, let me show you the ghosts of Advent Calendar's past. And I think you might enjoy this. And I have these here. These end up in my, in my, <laughs> I'm here standing in my oven, so I'm thinking about uh, cooking up things in the Omni Channel oven. Uh, but uh, these actually don't end up on, in something, they end up on something. So what I've done is with all the exclusives that can be found in the uh, Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar, I have bought the Lego ornaments that have nice builds in them of Santa Claus, of a reindeer, of a present, uh, of a snowman, of a penguin, a number of different, a log cabin, a number of different builds. There's even the Lego friend ones. Anyway, I've taken those exclusive figures uh, or the ones, the Christmas figures, and I've put them in the ornaments. So in no particular order, I'll just show these with you here. Uh, in, we have the snow trooper and that came with a lap and calendar. This is actually a full on snow trooper. So this is the one with, uh, with the caping and everything. Uh, so I, I modified them, but it all came with this cool snow blower. So this is actually from last year's advent calendar. So share that with you there. I forgot which year this one was from, but this was just a, uh, a clone trooper uh, with a Santa Claus hat and a cup. And then there was a fireplace built in that year's advent calendar. And uh, so it has the flame and has some stockings hung by the chimney with care with a couple of lightsaber hilts. So I have that. Uh, it's fun when I put up the Christmas tree and have uh, these exclusive Lego Star Wars Christmas builds on there. I think this was from last year. I believe this is a, a speeder from, from Indoor based on the green base there. But there we go. And the reason why I included that one is because that's kind of like a sleigh. And in the future, if I've got some minifigures, I will put it uh, there. 
All right, now this is a snowman. Uh, this snowman came, and again, this is on another sleigh. I believe this is the sleigh that came with the Django Fett one. This snowman came with this helmet, but without the, uh, the printing on it from Star Wars Rebels. So I just replaced uh, that snowman and I put that helmet on there to make it a bit more fun. Oh, actually, this is not Lego uh, Star Wars, but this is actually one of the builds from the advent calendar, uh, not from the advent calendar, from one of these actual ornaments. Here's an example of one of those builds. I thought they did a nice job with the snowman. So until I have a, a Christmas build from a Lego Star Wars advent calendar to fill this up, then I'll keep Frosty in there. But that's an example of what you would get if you bought one of these ornaments. Oh, actually, let me take that back. Uh, bum, bum. This is actually supposed to be the Rebel. This, is, this, this snowman is actually from last year, and uh, it was supposed to have the Rebel helmet on it, but I put that Rebel helmet with the General from Rogue One uh, in my minifigure case. And uh, until I get a suitable X-Wing pilot helmet and a spare one that, uh, that, doesn't ha that I have a duplicate of the, the print on it, I will um, just, I'll, I'll roll with this one for now. And this is the one that I was meaning to say. This is a fun scooter here. And then this one also came with a stud shooter, but this snowman was supposed to be uh, an Imperial one. And uh, yeah, it has the non-printed, which I believe is unique uh, helmet to have a non-printed version of that. But that's a fun, fun build. This was a moisture evaporator. I think this was from last year. A Christmas tree version of a moisture evaporator. Speaking of Christmas trees, this came with the very first Lego Star Wars advent calendar in 2011. This was a Christmas tree. Had nothing to do with Star Wars, but it was a Christmas build. And, uh, but Yoda that year came as Santa Claus. So, but because that came in the calendar, I'm including it here. We had, uh, there's a very famous Lucasfilm Christmas card that was sent out, uh, drawn by Ralph McQuarrie, who did all of the artwork for the original Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. I think even, uh, yeah, for Return of the Jedi. He's very responsible, he's responsible for the aesthetic, uh, which is quite cool. And uh, so the look and feel of Star Wars is, is due to him. And uh, they, anyway, the card had R2-D2 with uh, antlers on it and C-3PO as Santa Claus. So I thought it was very cool that Lego um, made a reproduction of that Christmas card with these figures here. This is a couple of years ago. It got spun around, but here's BB-8 and uh, uh, Santa BB-8. He came with a, um, a snowboard and then it, there was also another like sleigh. Uh, and so I put all of those together in this particular one here, quite similar to the pork. Ah, here's some of the exclusive prints that I'm talking about. Here is Darth Vader as Santa Claus. And I just think this is beautiful when Lego did this. They made an exclusive print taking Darth Vader's, if you can see that there, taking Darth Vader's um, torso and, uh, and legs and making it, Santifying it. And that's just, that's just that's so nice. This is a wonderful thing to have uh, as part of uh, you know, especially as a Lego collector. And then to put it on your Christmas tree. So I love that. Here is uh, Django Fett. And um, again, this is, this is Django Fett as Santa Claus. And he, instead of his jetpack, he has um, the, the knapsack there filled with gifts. And his jetpack is actually propelling this particular sleigh. Now, I wonder how many other people out there have done this and done this with their advent calendars before. If you have, please write a comment and say to me, 
yeah, Ron, I've done that. And then send me a link so I can check out your pictures. This one's really fun. I love uh, Astromech, and this was an exclusive Christmas tree Astromech. I'm not sure if you could see he has lights at the top of his head. I could just barely squeeze him in here. And uh, anyway, this one is just a lot of fun. An exclusive print. Cannot find this print of a Christmas tree Astromech anyplace else. Do you see the, um, the ornaments there on his, on his head too are supposed to be the lights? I really like this one. It's a lot of fun. Here is Darth Maul as Santa Claus. I think this was the second year, so I think this was 2012, but this is just brilliant. And again, taking Darth Maul outfit and, uh, and doing an exclusive print for Christmas. Really like that. This is another one that has nothing to do with Star Wars, but how can you not put Olaf on your Christmas tree? So here's a Lego version of Olaf with the two babies from the, the Abominable Snowman from Frozen. And Frozen 2 is coming out soon, so I know everybody will be singing. There are two things that are gonna, and everyone will be watching Disney this Christmas. It'll be Frozen 2, and then it'll be The Rise of Skywalker. But anyway, so Olaf, sort of part of the family. How many people too, when you've watched the Frozen 2 trailer, doesn't it feel very much like the teaser trailer from Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker? There's just a, there's just very, the uh, Anna and Elsa have a very, uh, I would say Poe and, uh, and Ray type of feel. Anyway, the trailer just, um, it just, I don't know, it was reminiscent of that to me. Here is another exclusive print. I believe this was also in year two, where we had two exclusive prints in the same calendar. So we had Darth Maul, and then we have R2-D2 as Frosty. And I just think it's fantastic, this print. It's, it's just really, it's, it's gorgeous. It's great. Uh, and because the, uh, the sensors here are, are carrots, uh, he's got, for his eye, it's a piece of coal. They just really did a nice job. I know it's expensive for Lego to do this, but fans really appreciate this. They really, I, I, I do. Have just two more here. This is from, this was the very last exclusive print that we received in an advent calendar. I believe this was three years ago now. This was Chewbacca as, the, as an abominable snowman. And I just think this is just a gorgeous figure as well too. They did his bandolier in Christmas colors. Uh, he's shooting out snowballs and, uh, and he came with a Christmas tree. And I em embellished the Christmas tree a little bit. So I just, I just uh, sparked it up, putting the, um, the star at the top. I think that makes the build a little bit nicer. Anyway, and the final one, and this was the one that started it all. And this was Master Yoda as Santa Claus. And this is actually, this was from a friend's, uh, uh, with a puppy uh, ornament. But so Yoda gets the, the purple, the exclusive ribbon, because this is the year one. So Yoda as Santa Claus. And what a great print on Yoda. I'm not sure if you can fully, fully see through the bulb, but just a really nice print on Yoda. And he is on another speeder, or in this case, a sleigh and carrying the gifts. So that's quite cool. Now, you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to take the exclusive gonk droid here. I'm going to take the exclusive uh, pork and Chewbacca and see how I can fit these in. I haven't pre-tested this out yet. So let's see how this is gonna work. But I'll probably do something like this, take the gonk droid and uh, let me grab a, just, just always good if you just want to uh, elevate a figure, just take uh, one stud, put it there, and probably want to have him be as centered as best as possible. So let's try that and see if he'll fit in here. Sometimes 
clearance can be an issue. And look at that. So this is the debut, doing this for the very first time. Here's what the gonk droid is going to look like for uh, the next for this year when I put it up on the advent calendar. And I'll probably switch this out and do one with the yellow ribbon so that it's not uh, there. But anyway, the gonk droid, he looks cute. So I'm excited to add that. And then what I'll also do is in this one, This uh, was the penguin that for last year, I believe, and it has this round plate here, but I don't think I need that. I think that would make the build too high. Uh, we will put in the pork here. Let's see if we can get the build, angle this in. I'd like to include the fire here because I think the pork wants to, I think the pork would be very excited to be Eaten, eaten up. Uh, let's see. Again, just taking an extra stud. I will uh, put that there. Hopefully that gives me enough height to put the fire up. Just need to do one more. All right, so have that there. We don't have room for Chewy in here. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't put that together, but I may do, I may do that in the future. And just slide this in. Have it backwards. And there you have the debut of the Christmas Porg on Octu with the present and the fire that Chewie's going to use at the end of the holiday season to turn him into a turkey leg. Now, you're probably thinking, Ron, you left out a figure. And I sure did. And I did that on purpose. And that is because this is the reason why if you, if you didn't like anything else that you saw in the, the advent calendar this year, you have to at least buy it for this exclusive uh, of, of uh, Luke Skywalker from Octu. And remember he caught the fish. I'm assuming this was his, uh, his pole that he walked around with that he actually, um, the unfair fight uh, that he had with Ray, where he uh, <laughs> he didn't have his, his, she actually has his lightsaber, and uh, anyhow, that that movie was just really bad story. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate getting another version of Luke Skywalker. As of this moment, this is a, an exclusive figure, and I think if we look what Lego has done uh, last year and this year. We, re 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 uh, we have, re actually the past three years, uh, we have received exclusive figures that uh, are not Christmas themed, but they're exclusive to the advent calendars and they uh, are, uh, uh, you can add them to your collection. I'm just for a loss of words of what I'm trying to say, but they're not, they're exclusives, but they're not Christmas themed exclusive. So maybe fans appreciate this more. I hope that he remains exclusive and doesn't turn up in another set because I don't think that'd be fair. Uh, one thing I would like to see Lego do, however, just while talking about this, I'd like to see the younger version of Luke from the, uh, when he did the force projection in The Last Jedi and he fought Kylo Ren. I'd like to see that version of Luke in minifigure form. And I don't know if you recall, but we have yet to receive a Princess Leia or a general Leia figure from The Last Jedi. We have Leia, only one Leia from the new trilogy, and that is from Force Awakens. Now we have a variant of her, 
So a just slightly different print from Star Wars uh, Resistance, the TV series, but we don't have, but those two figures are very similar. So we only have one, but we don't have the Leia from The Last Jedi, and I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because her, either she was the outfit that she had in when she was uh, on the, that, that, that space chase that lasted the whole movie. Uh, she was uh, in white for most of that. I, I think they could have used her first outfit uh, where she, uh, that brown, uh, more brown color dress that she was in or the outfit that she had on when she was down on, on the planet. Uh, but was that crate? The planet that was covered with salt? Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, that's about it. That is my review of the, um, the 2019 LEGO Star Wars Advent Calendar. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I think this is great. I highly recommend this to, to everyone. Every, uh, whether you're a Star Wars fan or not, the price point on these are quite good depending upon the market that you're in. And I think that uh, they, they're, they're just a lot of fun. It's a great way to get into something. So actually, I didn't start collecting LEGO Star Wars until the same year that the Advent Calendar came out. So the first one. So that was 2011. So from 1999 to 2011, I looked on and I said, wow, I want to collect, I want to collect. But I actually didn't start collecting until earlier that year. So the Advent Calendar created a great way, a great vehicle for me to get started collecting. My first set was the Death Star. And uh, then my, I think my second set was, uh, actually my first set was one of those buildable planets. And it was the ATST from Endor. Then my second set was the Death Star. And then I got the Advent Calendar. And now I've got a crazy collection eight years later where I went on eBay and went back and bought a not every figure going, uh, on going back to 99 and then a number of sets as well too. So crazy. All right. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, maybe you'll be watching this then. So jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. All right. I want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, there's always fresh content simmering on our storytelling stovetop. So whatever happens in this kitchen shouldn't stay in this marketing kitchen. I'm Ron Vining, your host, reminding you to invite your family and friends to the next episode of Marketing Kitchen TV.